This, this is the Our Auto Expert Podcast. Find us on air, online, on mobile, and on your smart speaker. Please subscribe at ourautoexpert.com. Our Auto Expert. 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 Now, here's the host of Our Auto Expert. Our Auto Expert. Nick Miles. Locally created, nationally celebrated from the northwest to the southeast, this is the World's Car Radio Show. If it has a throttle, we'll feature it on air, online, on smartphone, or on smart speaker. This is our Auto Expert, where two million Americans get their automotive news daily. I'm your host, Nick Miles, along with truck girl Jen. I have some breaking news this morning, Jen. You can't get COVID-19 through the radio. Isn't that great? Yeah, so you don't have to wear your mask uh, <laughs> listening to this show. You might want to put something in your ears, but you don't have to wear your mask. <laughs> Earplugs may be required. Uh, it's been a exciting week in the car industry. An awful lot has been happening. Uh, new cars unveiled. I've been in L.A. all week. I have been um, announcing new cars on TV stations all over the country. The worst thing about doing live TV is when you're in on the West Coast, <clears throat> you have to start at midnight, mm-hmm. which is really, 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 really painful because, of course, on the West Coast, the East Coast TV starts at 5 a.m., which is 2 a.m. on the West Coast, which means you're at work two hours before that, which means I'm going to bed at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. Have you ever tried to go to bed and sleep a full night, sleep at 4 o'clock in the afternoon? No, because you were waking up. Probably about the time I was going to bed. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> I, I, last night, um, the radio station here was sending, were trying to get hold of me at 8.30 at night. I was well asleep. I was like, <laughs> yeah, good luck. <laughs> I think e- even if my spouse had like, jumped on my chest last night, nothing would have happened. Like, I wouldn't have woken up. <laughs> no. I actually, uh, I woke up with the, like, the iPad still running some YouTube and all this sort of thing this morning. <laughs> I was dead to the world. Uh, Yeah, we had a lot of really fun announcements. We'll talk about those throughout the show, but uh, new cars revealed. It would have been the LA Auto Show uh, last week. That's right. It would be going on this weekend. It would be a Friday night would have been, you know, the public would have been pouring in to the convention center in LA, looking at all the new cars, trucks and SUVs, the excitement, the the stars. You would have had uh, all the stars from all the TV shows walking around there. Um, I, I would just awesome and remember auto shows, brushing shoulders with Arnold Schwarzenegger and all those different stars. It just I would think have... you could have saw McConaughey. Yes. I know, right? He would have been there oh. looking at the Lincolns. It would have been a lot of fun in an eye, but, you know. Would no. have. Should would have. Would have, should have. <laughs> Instead, it was just me in the Marconi Museum in Orange County with a bunch of cars, me and Mike, uh, doing those. So uh, there was a lot of exciting things to see, do, and, and feel as well. Good. Did you miss me? I did. Did you wish you were in L.A.? Yes. I actually got to drive the new Mercedes-Benz GLS 600, the Maybach. Okay, um, the Mercedes Maybach. Ma- Ma- Mercedes Maybach. Mercedes Maybach GLS 600. That's I got beautiful. to drive the Mercedes uh, Mercedes A- AMG, no, the Mercedes AMG E53 Cabriolet, and the Mercedes Benz. Uh, AMG All Terrain, which is their lifted wagon. Yeah, I'm excited for that. It's oh, so different. I can't remember how everything on the name goes. I do know how the name <laughs> goes of this, though. It was the uh, 2021 Toyota Highlander. I remember that name. <laughs> Toyota make my life much easier. Uh, Brock Cartledge joining us on the phone. He is Toyota's marketing uh, senior analyst. Uh, thank you so much, Brock, for joining us. And I got an in- incredible uh, amount of time to spend with a new Highlander XSE uh, platform. I know from clinics, and you might want to sit down for this, everybody, as you're listening to this, but in recent clinics, some of the audience said the new Highlander was sexy. And that's not something, I think even Toyota told me they were surprised at that, but it is pretty sexy. Isn't that true, Brock? That's true. Good morning, Nick. Thank you so much for having me on. But you are absolutely right. We, you know, the Highlander went through a complete redesign earlier this year with model year 20. It's the fourth generation. And then here we are again, less than a year later, introducing the new model year 21, which has, a, you know, it already is sexy, but we've got this new even sexier XSE 
grade that is introduced for the new model year. So you are absolutely right. It is kind of the epitome of style, but you also have enhanced performance that we're, we're thrilled about. So I, we, yeah, you absolutely hit it right. We can play sexy with Toyota now. <laughs> and that's, you know, Lexus started to do that. Your uh, luxury sister company started to sort of make their cars more uh, sexy, more visually appearing appealing but uh toyota's sort of gone that way now to make the vehicles uh more sexy and i love the idea that you guys make the grills different on different trim levels it's been such a long time that you had to walk around it and look at what it said on the back to know what trim level it is now a glance will tell you that absolutely so the, for the new xsc grade we do have that unique uh to xsc grade mesh front grille you've got a sporty front bumper as well as a lower spoiler and then you also, if you know, you go to the side, you see unique wheels on that grade. Um, so you've got two-tone standard 20-inch wheels. You've got black accents throughout the vehicle itself on the exterior. And then you even have, you know, the exclusive two t- uh, twin-tip exhaust on the back of this new XSC grade, which is a Highlander first. So you're absolutely right. You can now easily easily see the, the difference between these grades uh, just by looking at it without looking at the badge itself. So you also there. you also a very ups, upgrade on the interior. I mean, red leather. Hello, that's awesome. I know it's it's a pretty amazing. So you with this grade, you've got two available trims. So you can either get the black mixed media, or my favorite, what you just mentioned, the new two tone red leather. So you've got black and, and red leather together. Um, it ties in really nicely to the red stitching that you have on the instrument panel at the front of the vehicle. You've got ambient lighting throughout. Um, so it's just really kind of cool and sets the mood and the tone of the XSC grade. But you're right, that red just really pops and just screams sporty. And uh, again, I'm going to say it's sexy. One of the things, I'm, I'm very shallow in this for things I like in vehicles, but um, one of the things that the Highlander has always had and I always have been in love with is the fact that uh, in the second row, you've always had such massive, I'm only five foot four, so this doesn't really count. I have a 21 inch inseam. Yeah. But uh, I getting to that amount of leg room in the second row has always been outstanding. I've always made the joke, you almost have to take an Uber for the amount of leg room it has to get from the second row to the front row because there is so much leg room. Anybody that is six foot and above has just ample amount of legroom. It's been, it's almost been ridiculous how much legroom you've had. Yeah, it is impressive. It is one of those things that it's just an additional comfort that the Highlander provides. And you've got the third row. So you, you can fit up to eight, depending on which Highlander you're in, uh, eight passengers with you. So you can bring your whole crew, which is, is really, really nice. And, and everybody's comfortable, which is, is amazing. Uh, now, I think this is interesting and, and you need to explain this to me what has been a hit for you at toyota for a long time is your safety sense i mean doing things to be able to do like uh, detect pedestrians in and cyclists and, and pedestrians in low light i mean giving giving much more than the competitors give in your safety sense system but you gave us a, a little bit of an edge now with this latest to- edition of the toyota highlander you've given us uh, safety sense 2.5 so it's a, it's better than two, but it's not quite three. W- what happened? Yeah, so you still get the amazing suite of features that came on uh, Toyota Safety Sense 2.0. So you still get you know the road sign assist, the full speed range dynamic radar, cruise control, lane key technology. But where the enhancement comes in is really in the features for the pre collision system, and particularly with pedestrian detection. So, you know, previously that existed within 2.0, but the enhancement for the 2.5 plus is that there's, you know, additional intersection support. So if someone is, is particularly with the left-hand turn, uh, so being able to identify cars when you're making that left-hand turn as well as the pedestrian. So it's kind of a tricky spot when you're making that turn. And so now the enhancement is that uh, you've got increased functionality with this 2.5 plus, and that is standard across all Highlanders. You, you mentioned it earlier, is that you know everything that we do at Toyota is about safety and protecting our, our passengers, your passengers. And so you get the star safety system, and then we're continuing to work to always improve this Toyota safety uh, system that is, is on all of our vehicles. Now, the funny thing about the uh, a Toyota and a Lexus vehicle is that you can, um, you can buy one, 
and a year later, especially when the factories weren't producing and, and during COVID, about a year later, um, it's almost cheaper to buy a new one because people don't want to let them go. The the uh, the gently used market is almost uh, there's there's not much uh, given it. In fact, your vehicles tend to occupy the top spots in uh, in retail value for for used vehicles. They last a long time and their value holds, doesn't it? And, and there's a, there must be some sort of secret to that. Yeah, I think it's just the combination of everything that you get with a Toyota. So, you know, you get the this, this, uh, safety features that we just talked about, but you're getting enhanced style. You're getting enhanced features, and we continue to improve these each and every model year. Um, the performance is there. We continue to dial that up. And so I just it keeps people coming back. It keeps people engaged in these vehicles. And our loyalty is, is extremely, extremely high. And we love the relationships that we have with our customers, and we just want to keep improving it for them to, to come back, you know, all right. In the last minute we've got, Brock, tell us about price, availability, and fuel economy. So best fuel economy we'll get out of the Highlander. Uh, that will be on the Highlander Hybrid, so you can get up to 36 miles uh, combined, um, which is amazing. Uh, it's an increase over the previous generation, so that what came through with Model Year 20 uh, enhancement, and that continues for Model Year 21. Um, in terms of the, the pricing itself, the vehicles essentially start out – at, um, for gas at the L grade at $34,800, and then uh, the hybrid variants start out at $38,410 for the LE. There are 20 Highlanders to choose from overall, which Whoa. is impressive. Uh, six grades, you can either choose hybrid or gas, front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, so there's undoubtedly a Highlander for everybody listening today, um, which is just another great thing that the series has going forward in just terms of its variations and the options that we provide. And when, when does the XSE arrive in dealers? The XSE is already in, in dealers today. Oh, wow. So you can actually get head out. Um, so they started hitting dealer lots around the middle to end of September. Um, so I definitely encourage everybody to contact their dealer today to see if this new XSC grade um, is, is, is around for them to, to get their hands on. Brock Cartledge from Toyota. This is a senior marketing manager. Thank you for joining us, talking about the brand new Toyota Highlander. If you want to see a video on this vehicle, by the way, I went to the launch in Texas. You can see what I thought about it. You just have to head to OurAutoExpert.com. And by the way, at that website, our website, you will also find previous episodes of this show, plus some great videos and those videos we shot in LA last week. Check it out. More to come. Stand by. You're listening to Our Auto Expert. Catch up with previous episodes of the show at our website, ourautoexpert.com. You can hear all past shows, see automotive video, and read inside a car stories about your next ride. Our Auto Expert is where 2 million Americans get their automotive news daily. You'll find it all at ourautoexpert.com. And you also find this guy there, Mike Cadell, joining us. He's in Detroit, test driving the new Ford F-150. Mike, does it live up to your expectations? Yeah, it does, and more. I, uh, as I'm talking to you guys, I'm literally sitting in the parking lot at Ford's global headquarters in Dearborn. Just test drove uh, the Ford F-150, and it's the 3.5 liter with uh, the V6. The, they're calling it the Power Boost, and that's only on the hybrid version. Uh, I'm very impressed with it, more than I thought I would be, and then uh, spent the last three hours in the Ford Mustang Mach-E. So uh, two cars, one day at, at headquarters, and I, I'm really impressed. Uh, with both vehicles, surprisingly, uh, you, with the Mach E, are you clawing your wife Flora and asking if you can use the credit card? Uh, I it, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard, you guys. It's hard because I think Ford Ford's doing some great things right now. Um, I think the number one question people across uh, the country interested in the Ford Mustang Mach E are going to ask themselves, which if uh, your listeners aren't aware, it's the, the new Mustang. It's electrified. Yeah, it doesn't live up to the expectation. And, um, you know, I think that's what remains to be seen. We obviously can't talk about how it, how it drives just yet, but uh, I love the exterior design. I love the interior look and feel. I think uh, getting 300 miles of range is going to be pretty impressive. So does it live up to the, the expectation? We'll share that down the road, but the F-150 does. All right. Do you? Uh, I know you've ordered some Ford. You ordered a Bronco, a full-size Bronco. You were talking about trading in your... F two fifty for a Raptor. Uh, are there any changes to your plans? So, you know, you know, it's catch twenty two. Uh, as a purist, I love uh, a V eight. You get a six point two liter V eight in some of the earlier versions, and the three point five liter EcoBoost motor in the current Raptor, which is a twin turbo. 
Uh, you know, you also got to put two kids through college. Uh, so, so whatever, 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 yeah. whatever. Yeah, you have to take that into consideration. No, you don't. You new do kids through college or a new car? <laughs> Make him earn it. <laughs> new car. New car for Jen. New, new car for Jen. So, Jen, truck girl Jen, I, I, I have been struggling with this because uh, I know how much of an affinity you have for trucks. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, what I'm, what's going through my mind right now is I sell the 250. Mm-hmm. I can get money for it, right? I can make money because it's 6.7 liter turbo diesel, and those go for a significantly higher amount on the used market. And I could buy, like, a, a 2013 uh Ford Raptor and, and pay twenty five grand for it and have a fun truck. Uh-huh. Put a little money in the bank for the kids for college, right? Doesn't that make sense? Mm-hmm. No. no, no. I I would get what you want. Let's. <laughs> I'd buy a Ram, Ram, too short. Ram TRX. Yeah, that's what I was going to no, say. Negative. No so, way. So oh. first of all, you know that Megan's going to get a dancing scholarship, and you know Tyler's going to going to get an engineering scholarship. They're set. They're bright kids. They'll be fine. <laughs> You're on your own, kid. Yeah. I get my toys. You figure out college, which is actually what my dad did. He said, yeah, go figure out college there, big guy. And you turned out just fine. fine. <laughs> just, you know, just give them their first car and, and they'll be good. And then, you know, support that for them. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. Here's your car. I, Raptor Tyler, here you go. I, I, would, yeah. I would be such a selfish parent. I, I have no business. My kid would be like, yeah, this, I've got eight cars in the driveway. Just drive one, and if you bring it back with a dent, it's your problem to take care of it and fix it. Yeah. Uh, hey, uh, Nick, have you guys talked about the cars uh, we just covered? Not the, yet. Oh, no, we're the, waiting the for you. Stuff? We were waiting for you. So let's talk about let's them. Let's do it. Tell me what you, well, were, I, what you liked. Oh, it, you know, it was it, the Mach E was there, so that's a given, and we've already talked about that. But the TRX, you're right, and and Jen, I agree with you. The TRX is amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, it's bigger. It's bigger than I thought it was going to be. I didn't expect it to. I, I need a. I'm six three. I need a step ladder to get inside the thing. <laughs> um, but that six point two liter supercharged motor with a seven hundred and two horsepower, you just, you know, you you can't you can't not talk about that vehicle. But Nick and I both had wagons that we test drove while we were in town one of them was on air that mercedes all-terrain i kind of am digging the wagon vibe i'm like wait what this wagon's kind of cool that is nick's favorite is the wagon i love i love german wagons i will tell you you don't have to wear jogging pants and have a ponytail to drive one either it's the They're nick awesome. bandwagon no, you don't no you don't <laughs> have to be a hippie to drive one and here's what's really here's what's really cool um I posted on social last night that I was surprised with the new Nissan V Proto, Proto, Proto for prototype. I, I, I saw all the online pictures before seeing it in person, and I was like, ho oh, hum. And then I saw it in person, Very and I fell in, I fell in love with it. And there's still debate. There's one engineering friend of mine on social. He's like, I've been doing this for years, and I know what a vehicle looks like even through pictures. And all oh, oh, no. verdict's still out. And wrong. Like, Dude, you're wrong. You wrong. don't even know, bro, Chacho. It's amazing. <laughs> Mike, in it the- is it is amazing, and the honoring that yellow color too. In the in the last two minutes, we have run through some of the other cars that really got you excited. Uh, staying in the theme of Nissan, I think the Nissan Rogue. You know, they're going monochromatic, and then you know, in that same category, the Toyota Highlander XSE. It's the first time the Highlander is going to have, you know, this cool sporty exterior style. The front of it is really pronounced, and I dig on that. The Infiniti QX55 was a little bit of a surprise for me, although I just test drove the QX50. I really loved that car, as did my wife. So the 55 has kind of that sport coupe uh, style to it, and I really, really dig on that. And then, of course, we have the Mercedes E15 3 Cabriolet, the AMG on there. It's like, come on, man, $102,000 of pure exhilaration. So there was a lot to talk about at the show. So many cool cars. Uh, and we got to cover them as a result of uh, no New York, no Detroit, and no L.A. So just some really fun cars to talk about over the course of uh, two, three days. Yeah, and we didn't get much sleep, but we also, uh, it was the first time we've worked together. We own this these companies together, and it's the first time we've seen each other in months. Uh, yeah, What's your name? So hey, you're Nick. Oh, I know you. You're yeah. Nick. Hey, yeah. <laughs> I remember you. We both got a little older. We both got a little grayer. <laughs> we have Which, to see I had to laugh with that photo that you guys took with the lighting, because you're so tall and Nick's so short. That was great. You yeah. 
Okay, so so just before we jump off, i got to share the quick story. So we we go to stage up for that picture, and I stand next to Nick, and he's like, go stand by the other car. (laughs) I'm like, why do you want me so far in the background? He's like, the further away you are, the more you're going to look even to my height. All right, it's time to say goodbye. (laughs) Thanks for joining us, Mike Cadell. Goodbye. Goodbye, Mike. Thank you, Mike. (laughs) If you want to to see some of Mike's videos, you see the videos that we did in uh, in, um, L.A., uh, Fox and Friends. You want to see all those things that we... Uh, TV shows we appeared on. Go to OurAutoExpert.com. Mike's there, Mike. I love you much. Thanks for joining us on the show. Stand by. We've got more Our Auto Expert on the way. You're listening to the Our Auto Expert Podcast. This is Our Auto Expert Radio Show. Our Auto Expert is on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can start a conversation with us and ask a car question. Just direct messages at Our Auto Expert. Our Auto Expert is where 2 million Americans get their automotive news daily. Uh, Chevrolet's iconic people and cargo hauler is uh, brand new. The Chevy Tahoe uh, has been redesigned. The ultimate SUV offering interior space and beautiful SUV stuff. That's uh, really really cool i i have to tell you that when i look at that vehicle um i think it's it's absolutely outstanding and and one of the reasons that i've always wanted one uh is is because it's i don't know one of the nicest things ever there there's also um, a, a new suburban as well which is sort of a sister vehicle to that um so i we wanted somebody on to talk about the uh, the, the the twins of uh, chevrolet's big vehicles uh we asked matt to come on uh, to talk about those from uh, chevrolet so first of all matt tell us the difference between the suburban and the tahoe for those people that don't know how they change in the lineup how they're different yeah, hey, hey, thanks for having me, Nick, and uh, gladly, gladly. Uh, very excited about our, our vehicles here. And, and, you know, when you think Tahoe and then support, probably a lot of similarities, but the, the main takeaway between the two wheelbases is you're going to get more room in a Suburban. Uh, both nameplates have grown from previous generation to our current, and uh, it, it was roughly 1% in Suburban, 4% in Tahoe. So they both got a little larger, but between the two, uh, Suburban is, is the vehicle if you're looking to haul the max cargo capacity within the segment. So if I take uh, the Suburban to Home Depot, I need two parking spaces and the Tahoe I can get into one. Is that right? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no it's, uh, it definitely has more room, but you know, as, as a segment leader, we've We've taken what our customers love and, and made it even better. So in that example, you know, garage ability has, has surfaced in terms of a concern, and, and we wanted to make sure uh, it, it was large, but uh, not too large, if you know what I mean. Which one does Hollywood use most of? Because we see, you know, they they used a lot in Hollywood, especially in sort of uh, crime dramas, sort of FBI, presidential films, uh, things, you know, uh, especially those type of movies. I mean, they, we all see them with presidential logos on the doors or CIA use the them. Most the, uh, the I presume they're going to use the Tahoe a lot more because those are the ones that probably that you can throw around the street a little more. When you use the Suburban, it probably doesn't skid around corners. You can't do, uh, you can't slide the back can't end down. Is it, yeah, it doesn't drift as well. You know, maneuverability is, is, is key. And, you know, when it comes to, to movies in, in particular, I, you know, a, a pretty awesome milestone, milestone for these main plates. Almost a year ago to the date, uh, you know, the, the Chevrolet Suburban was awarded the Hollywood star on the Walk of Fame, the only main plate to, to have that honor. So when you look at it, they're, they're pretty interchangeable, uh, but... When when a black Tahoe or Suburban shows up, yeah, you you know something's about to go down for sure. I think it's that there, there hasn't really been. A lot of people have tried to have a competitor to the Suburban. Um, nobody's really done it. I mean, there are some competitors to the Tahoe but uh, because of size, but nobody's really come up with a, I mean, you could call a Sprinter van a competitor to the Suburban, but nobody's really come up with a competitor to the Suburban, have they? Yeah, when, when I look at Suburban, and you know, it, there's, there's a lot there, and, and it starts with kind of that legacy, right? Our longest-running nameplate in the industry. So, you know, for over 85 years now, we've, we've taken what those customers have come back with, and, and whether it's, you know, moving military personnel or starring in that Hollywood film, um, it, it, it's built up that loyalty within itself. And then 
you know, when you think competitively, you know, we've, we've made our latest iteration the most versatile and advanced ever. So that's, that's through the cargo and interior. That's through unmatched technology and then the driving dynamic. So I think when you pool all three of those and all, you know, past customer insights and things that they love, um, I, all, all customers are excited to get behind the wheel of, of, of these vehicles. So let's talk a little bit about how customers buy these because uh, I'll give you a perfect example. In 2002, my neighbor across the road bought a Tahoe and he still owns it and he still has it in his driveway and he's not willing to get it. He said, in fact, people knock on his door offering to buy it. Uh, And it must have been a really good year that year because I have a friend who works for another car company and she lives in Santa Monica and she has a 2000, um, she has a 2000 and a 2014 and she is not willing to get rid of them. She's, you know, they just sit there in her driveway and she obviously has company cars all the time, but people hang on to these vehicles forever. What makes people not ever want to sell them? You know, it, it, that's a great point, right? It's an extremely royal uh, segment, but in particular, the customers love it. Uh, and I think there's there's multiple things to that. Uh, you know, I, I can I can definitely talk to a lot of the cool features we have, but it's it's more than that, right? It's it's a sense of style, sense of aspirational um, positioning within who they are as a person, and. And, you know, one of the statements I like to make is, is they look at this vehicle as, as a means to unlock the mastery of their universe. And I know that sounds very, very far out there, but um, we find customers use this, whether it's, you know, taking the family to a, a soccer practice or a night out on the town, uh, this vehicle can kind of operate in, in all those means. So it is a, a vehicle that is very uh, utilized in, in multiple aspects, and, and, you know, that's why customers love that. I see when I look on the road, I like to look at who drives what, right? It's like watching people in an airport. So you sit there in a cafe in the airport or, you you know, you can't do that as much. But you stand in an airport and you watch the people at your gate and you look at them and you make up stories about who they are and where they're traveling to. And when I'm at traffic lights in a city, I like to look across at the car and see the person next to me in the traffic light and see what they're driving and sort of see who they are and sort of put them into a little box and guess who they are. And so when I see something like a Chevrolet Silverado and I see, you know, uh, maybe it's an HD, a Silverado HD, and I always see somebody probably between the ages of 35 and 65 driving it, driving it. it's usually, um, you know, somebody that I consider to be a manual labor or somebody who likes to go out and do outdoor activities. They might have some skidoos, a fifth wheel, those type of things. But it's different with the Suburban. And in the Suburban and the Tahoe, you will see young families, often driven by the lady of the household. You will see um, single ladies in their 60s and 70s driving it. It seems to bridge the gender and the demographic gap. Yeah, and, and you're completely spot on. You know, I, I often say to, to the team, right, when we, when we look at Tahoe, it's a it's a me vehicle. And, and by no means is it specifically for, you know, one or two people in the household. It's, it's just the children, if there are children, have moved out. And so, uh, you know, it's positioned as a style or affluential uh, vehicle to be in. And then to your point, Nick, exactly spot on with Suburban, you know, we do see the female in the household driving it more and and it's a means to get the job done so i I look at that as the we vehicle right um but but it it scales right we have customers from the demographic all the way from you know late 20s upwards and into you know this this is their third or fourth repeat purchase whether it's a tower suburban because they tried it once and they just love it do you get people who come back to the brand time and time again? Like, uh, and we know they hang on to their vehicles for around 12 years, 12, 13 years is when somebody will buy a new one. But do they, all, they, they come back to Chevrolet all the time and they come back to the brand all the time and they buy another a Tahoe or another Suburban? Is, is that, is, do you hold on to your customers a lot? Yes. Um, so that's, that's one thing that really excites me about not only my current role, but uh, ultimately, the new vehicles. Uh, we, we have Chevy truck legends, and so those are repeat purchasers um, or a certain number of, of miles on, on road that they've, that they've spun. And so when we look at how Suburban specifically, we have very loyal uh, folks. So it's, it's a great customer experience. It's a great product experience. 
and it's uh, you know it's what they know and, and what they love to it, an extent here. And so when we look at Tahoe Suburban, um, it, it is loyal and engaging with those legends, hearing their stories, reading about it, and and featuring it in some of our advertising is, is great and. And when we talk repeat purchases, um, you know, their, their experience is what it is. And I think our product now is offered more choice, more than ever. Um, I hit on the cargo capacity max in, in this segment. Our driving dynamics were on the verge of, of the, uh, the new Duramax diesel. And it, it just goes on and on when, when we're talking technology and these, these two nameplates. So uh, a lot of excitement, not only around the the heritage and the legacy that we're, we're hearing from our legendary owner, but but also the product that's, that's on showroom floors right now. Right. In the last uh, 45 seconds we have, tell me about pricing and availability. Are these Where do they start uh, in pricing, and uh, are, they avail- are they both available right now? Yes. So both are available right now. You can get trims from LS all the way up to our signature high country. Um, so we have six trims available. Uh, each with its own distinct personality. And as far as pricing goes, you know, it, it, it is what the customer wants. So you can get in south of $50,000 in a brand new Tahoe. Um, all are available. And within our, our launch phase, we are green and, and go. And, and I, I hope everyone can have a chance to get behind the wheel and, and feel that uh, the presence that, that you do behind the, the vehicle. Matt, thank you very much for talking to us. Uh, I, As a previous owner, I was super excited to drive both vehicles, both the Suburban and the Tahoe. Uh, they are very different from the one that I owned, which was a 2000, uh, but they are amazing vehicles, and everybody that sees the new design inside and out is absolutely in love with them. If you want to uh, see some of our reviews where we've driven these vehicles, you can just go to ourautoexpert.com. You can also uh, read about the brand new versions on the website, which we have uh, done some reviews of them there. If you want to stand by, we'll tell you about the new vehicles that were released last week, plus what I'm driving. That's all coming up on Our Auto Expert. You're listening to Our Auto Expert. Oh, your smart speaker can be your radio. Just say, hey, Google, hey, Alexa, or hey, Siri. Play our auto expert radio shows. And all the previous episodes of the podcast are available. Hours of endless fun await you. I'm Nick Miles, and this is our auto expert radio show. Two million Americans get their automotive news daily from our auto expert. This week, uh, Jen, oh, here we go. Shush, shush phone. The phone always decides it wants to respond. I'm turn it off now. I put do not disturb on at the beginning of every radio show. I know you it do. It doesn't seem like the, sh- the phone just disobeys me. Mm-hmm. Alexa and all those things are so disobedient. Good thing <laughs> I don't have kids. Would, my mom says my kids would always be the best trained animal in, animals in the world. Um, anyway, <laughs> uh, Jen and I today drove in in the new Volvo V90 Cross Country. What a great piece of machinery. Mm-hmm. Uh, for for this year, it's got some updates. The pros on this vehicle, I think it's elegant. It has elegant interior and exterior design. It's, it has impressive cargo space. When I look at the V90 Cross Country from Volvo, it has a, a sort of a car-like handling, but it has the usability of an SUV because it's a station wagon. And by the way... Why do people hate station wagons so much? I mean, it's just basically a lowered crossover. I've just be, never been popular. It, it's a lower crossover. If that thing was lifted, it would be an SUV and everybody, or, or a crossover. Everybody would be fine with it. Uh, and it handles so it's much. So it's so like a car. Down. But it handles like a car. And that's yeah. the original crossover. I know. What's wrong with people? All I can tell you, though, is the interior is very calming. Yes, that's a Scandinavian that? effect on you. Yeah. <laughs> you are feeling good, sleepy. So, think of the snow star. <clears throat> think of the snow. Anyways, I was thinking yeah. it's a good place to put you in time out. Oh, really? <laughs> Nick needs to calm down. Do, do, am I excitable? <laughs> Shush your mouth, lady. Standard safety features are great. Uh, the powerful yet fuel-efficient engines. The things I think... Um, it could be improved on. It's not quite as roomy as the Mercedes-Benz E-Class. The infotainment touchscreen is, though very intuitive, it's a bit chunky at times. It doesn't respond fast enough, especially when you're driving and you're trying to do things on the touchscreen mm-hmm. and it doesn't do it fast enough. It's like a disobedient animal. 
Sometimes you just sort of shout at it. Uh, resale value is uh, average at best. They don't hold their value well. So if you're going to go buy a Volvo V90, I feel a sneeze coming on. Stand by. If you're going to go and buy a Volvo V90, sometimes it's better to buy a gently used. And Told you, Volvo V90. <laughs> sometimes uh, the value is uh, is not as good. So buying a used one can be good. And it's not the fastest shifting in the automatic transmission, although the, the dynamic driving um, modes are sometimes really great. Okay. I like to put it in dynamic driving modes and go, meow, past people, because they are quite sporty. Uh, it's got some new styling changes for 2021, new interior and exterior colors. I love the concrete color of the one that we're driving. So that concrete gray, these are gray. It's one of my favorite colors in the new cars for 2021, uh, 2020, 2021 is so in 1999, uh, tw- in, ni- in 2019, mm-hmm. everybody came up with those sand colored vehicles. Mm-hmm. Toyota, I think led the charge in that. They're the sort of color that the army paints their vehicles for desert climates right. that sand color on vehicles and then for 2020 everybody started to switch over to these concrete colors some do them in matte i love the look of a matte vehicle i can't imagine trying to maintain a matte paint that would just be a nightmare because you can't put it through a car wash at least some of the modern ones you can some but people don't you have to sign you, you used to have to i know they don't a lot of people do <laughs> jen a lot of people don't have the time that you do oh i know in their lives to hand wash your car 50 times a week <laughs> Uh, so car washes are the only choices. And I know it's sacrilegious to some people, but you have to put your car through a car wash. It's all you have. Okay. Um, and we don't. my hands aren't small enough to go into the gaps between the wheels. Yours might be, but mine aren't. Yeah. Yeah, it's little hands. What a toothbrush is called. Oh. Use a toothbrush. If you start washing your car with a toothbrush, you're dead to me. <laughs> if you, if That's they, you, how you clean your wheels oh, is with a toothbrush. Oh, you are kidding me. You're kidding me. You've you never could, done that? No. Oh my god! No, how I, do you think you get all the breakdowns? I have a stuff I have a person for that. In fact, uh, I have you two always people have for people. That. <laughs> uh, top speed of 112 miles an hour and more standard equipment than most of the competitors. I like this vehicle, midsize wagon. It's nice. I'd own this, and and plus Volvo. The biggest up for Volvo right now. The biggest up for them is they have these built-in dog cages for the back, dog kennels, whatever you like to call them. But the coolest thing about it is. And this is really important. If you own an animal, it's very important to transport them in a kennel because if you get in an accident, several things can happen. First of all, the dog can become a projectile in the vehicle and hurt the dog and you. Second of all, what's the first thing the emergency services do when they arrive at your vehicle after an accident? What's the first thing they do? I don't know. Open the door. It's like what's, <laughs> what, what's a scared animal going to do? Oh, of course, going to run. Going to yeah. run. So you always want to put them in a kennel because right. they're, they're going to be safe and they're not going to run. What Volvo do with their kennels in the back is when you open the trunk, the lift gate mm-hmm. of the vehicle, they have another gate on the inside. Oh. So the animal can't run. You can put your hand in and put a leash on the animal and then lift that gate up. It's big enough. It's just several bars. It's big enough to l- put your hand in and put a leash on. Genius work by Volvo, by the way. Um, all right, what vehicles did we have at the LA International Auto Show, which wasn't happening in LA this week, but what was happening is we got to look at some vehicles. The Nissan Aria was there, by the way. That was very cool. It does 300 miles on a single charge. It doesn't come until the end of 2021, but it's their new electric crossover. Huge 12-point-something-something screen on the inside. <laughs> Everything is huge on the inside now, these screens in these vehicles. Uh, we had that Mercedes-Benz uh, E-Class E450 All-Terrain, which is their version of the wagon. Uh, uh, this uh, is around 67600 starting price. Of course, that's German money. Uh, it's also the first time the all-terrain has been available in the U.S. It's basically a lifted wagon. It's lifted by a, a one-inch wagon. The Mike talks about the Proto-Z, which is the Z car. Much bigger on the inside than I expected, by the way. You know how compact the old Zs were on the inside? This is There was loads of room on the inside. Really impressed by that. Um, the Ford Mustang Mark-E, by the way, it starts at $43,000, uh, but it is eligible for the seventy five hundred dollar tax credit which brings it down to around thirty six thousand dollars and change which actually if you think about it i mean the bolt the chevy bolt starts at forty something thousand mm-hmm. dollars so it's a really good deal um the ford mustang marquee was there the wrangler four by e 
we saw that the plug-in wrangler hybrid that goes i'm driving that by the way december 13th fantastic um that is their new plug-in hybrid does 25 miles for a wrangler on electricity alone 375 horsepower zero to 60 in six seconds we saw the ram trx we had that on tv we talked about the toyota highlander xse we had that on tv the new toyota venza um, with that stargazer roof where you have the panoramic sunroof, you push a button and it goes opaque mm-hmm. electronically. Very cool. Really? Sophisticatedly styling. Uh, only comes in a hybrid. Comes in all-wheel drive. That was cool. The Toyota Sienna minivan. Well, and up to 40 that. miles per gallon. Yeah, that's, that's just, fantastic. That's silly gas and fuel economy. Uh, <laughs> the new Nissan Rogue. We've talked about that. We had that there. The new Mercedes-Benz E53 Cabriolet. The new Mercedes-AMG. Um, we also had the... Uh, 63S. Yes, we had the oh, S63. Yes. We also had the McLaren Senna. Mm-hmm. Um, we've talked about that before, but it was a million dollar car. Mm-hmm. I actually sat in it. There you go. Uh, and the new Lincoln Nautilus was just announced. Uh, it has phone as a key, a new 13.2 center a horizontal center stack. The new Lexus uh, IS was there, and the new Lexus LS 500. They've refined the interior, made it much more plush, comfortable, and Ottoman massaging seats. And I took my naps in that. That's how cool it was. <laughs> All right, stand by. More to come. Our Auto Expert, ourautoexpert.com. You're listening to the Our Auto Expert Podcast. A locally created, nationally celebrated from the northwest to the southeast. This is the World's Car Radio Show. If it has a throttle, we'll feature it on air, online, on smartphone, or on smart speaker. This is Our Auto Expert, where 2 million Americans get their automotive news daily. I'm your host, Nick Miles, along with Truck Girl Jen. So just completed this absolutely mammoth uh, broadcast, which would have been the LA Auto Show, going through all of these cars and having them live at the Marconi Museum all the way down in Orange County, uh, got to see some of the really exciting new vehicles. Uh, so I rushed through them in the last segment. I'll just give you a little more of a taste of some of those vehicles, which was a lot of fun. Talking about Mercedes-Benz AMG E53 Cabriolet, this is, of course, their uh, E-Class, member of the E-Class family. Congratulations, by the way, to Mercedes-Benz for winning Motor Trend Car of the Year for their E-Class lineup. A sportier look, it offers the AMG carbon fiber package, a turbocharger V6, 400 129 horsepower and six different driving modes. It has the ride control suspension, the new sensors, sensing steering no, um, wheel, so it knows sort of the inputs, what's coming up on the road. Uh, it also starts around, hold your breath, sit down, take a Valium, $82,500 and is available now. It was in this beautiful blue matte color. The coolest thing that Mercedes do in their convertibles and if you haven't experienced this, I would find an excuse just to test drive it and do it on a cold day. So you take the roof, you put it down, you drive on a cold day, which is, it doesn't sound like a pleasurable experience, but there you are, temperatures which are too cold to put the roof down normally, scooting along in the air and you put on the air scarf. This is an outlet just in the headrest that sits at the back of your neck and it blows warm air all around your neck that goes down the back of your shirt um, and or blouse, depending on you know which gender you are. And then you just feel beautifully warm with the massaging seats as you ride around. It's one of the most tranquil experiences that I've... And I didn't want to get out. They also have the massage feature in there. And I was explaining to uh, Mike Cadell as we drove around uh, how all of the new Mercedes vehicles also have what three words. You may have heard us talk about this in the past. What three words is a really interesting piece of technology that's actually going... It's going to be embedded in... In a lot of vehicles in the coming future or in the future but it's now embedded in Mercedes and I think Ford's as well so that you can go to the website and check this out what three words every single 10 foot square in the United States has its own three word designation and that means that you know where we're sitting right now has its own designation and that designation actually has a th- you can just put it in to what three words and those what three words actually tell you where you are you are obsessed with it i am i keep going on about it because it's so cool i know so the designation of what three words you can just put those three words into the navigation bar Mm and mercedes in any mercedes car so perhaps your what three words i don't know it could be anything i said mine last time i can't remember what it was though you want to look it up 
No, because you told me that I was dumb for telling everybody where I live. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No. All right. I'm just saying. Why would you tell everybody <laughs> what your what three words? Are? So everybody has their what three words mm -hmm. of where they actually are. And they have multiples because depending upon how big they are, right? Right. Right. Um, Did you? Well, you do it by ten foot squares. I'm trying to look right. at where we are right now, so everybody could could play along. Um, I'm just putting the ro the radio station address in. Okay. Where we where our headquarters are. Um, here, I'm nearly done. So the New York City Hall Grand Complex housing where the mayor is, it's Fear Audit Zone. Fear Audit Zone. Isn't that great? All right. <laughs> so where we are right now, our what three words are edge lifted memory. Mm. Now, if you put edge lifted memory in to what three words, mm -hmm. it's the point that we're all sitting at right now. You could navigate to us right now and come and say hi. And you could put that into any Mercedes Benz car and soon any vehicle and it navigates. So you might think, oh, this is really stupid. I got the address. No, but it's even more intelligent than that. Why it's super intelligent is if you're standing in Times Square in New York and you can't find your friends, you just send them the three words and it'll navigate to that te same 10 foot square that you're standing in. It's kind of scary. Is it? Yeah, if well, you really not give it to a serial killer, are you, Jen? Well, it is the internet, you know. <laughs> Anybody can figure it out. I don't know. It's just kind of weird. I think it's genius, personally. I know. You're obsessed. All right. Well, that's in every Mercedes Benz. So we talked about the Eater Cabriolet. <laughs> The, the, we talked about this last week, but the only 2021 Rogue, uh, Nissan are so confident in this vehicle that they have competitors at the uh, the dealership. So you can drive a competitor vehicle, which they mostly bought RAV4s, mm -hmm. and you could drive a RAV4 against a, a brand new Rogue. And they they are so confident the Rogue is better that you'll drive away in a Rogue. Uh, Nissan is, the, is their best-selling model, by the way, the Rogue. The first of 10 new Nissans that will be arriving in 20 months. 10 new Nissans. Isn't that crazy? Crazy? It's <laughs> mind-bugging crazy. Mind-blowing? Yes, boggling. Yeah, mind-boggling. Boggling. <laughs> uh, it has a really luxurious inside. 10 screens, a 10.3-inch head-up display, a 12.3-inch dash infotainment, and then a 12.3-inch dash. Uh, so 12.3-inch gauges and 12.3-inch infotainment screen. And uh, second row, the doors open 90% on the uh, side, so you can have easy access to get a car seat in there. And it starts at just around $26,000. It's, it's, that's silly money. Yeah, that's Silly good. money. That's just saying. Uh, it's a really nice piece of machinery as well. Uh, there's the Toyota Sienna minivan that we uh, talked about. Of course, this uh, comes in a hybrid now, which is the only the second mini. It doesn't come in a plug-in, not like the Chrysler Pacifica. Mm -hmm. uh, plug-in hybrid but it is a hybrid um, and it has an ottoman in the second row it's so another I've, vehicle I, I have a question in. for you all right go here we go i know right so you know me i love my big engines but if you were seriously thinking about getting would you get an ev one that you plug in or would you go more hybrid for what for any vehicle what's depends. your preference uh it absolutely depends on the vehicle if i was going to buy a jeep wrangler mm -hmm. uh would i buy an ev or a plug-in hybrid I'd buy the plug-in hybrid because they don't make an EV. Okay, really? I'm yeah. just saying, do, would, do you really want the responsibility of plugging it in every night? You, but you don't have to. That's the whole point. That's it's why not, I like the It's hybrid, not electricity alone. If you get a plug-in hybrid, it's not an EV. It's not a battery EV, a BEV. Right. So it doesn't only operate on electricity, but you can uh, you can operate it up to 30 miles or so on electricity alone. That's the beauty of it. So most people do trips of under 20 miles each day i was just thinking of areas that have you know electricity is a lot more expensive than it is here we we're pretty lucky I but think so you're thinking end. of places like california or sunbelt florida our, our listeners in florida right right they can get cheaper electricity at night so that's why you have these timed EVs, like in California oh. and Florida where you plug the vehicle in and it only charges when the electricity rate drops Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, see, it's not everywhere in the snow belts where it's uh, the same price all the time. A lot of people have electricity prices drop at night. It's hot it, in the day. It's more expensive when there's air conditioning. Yeah. So everyone is high demands in the day for air conditioning and those sort of things. Uh, late at night, when the temperature drops outside, there's not such electrical demand and the price of electricity drops. Unless it's cold outside. 
Well, then lot, <laughs> most people have gas. You've always got an argument, haven't you? No, I'm just... Your tr- parents put up with a lot, didn't they? Yeah, they do. They yeah. still do, I think. They do. <laughs> <laughs> they, should, they should get some kind of medal. That's all I think. Hey. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the Ram 1500 TRX, we talked a little bit about that. That was uh, absolutely awesome. And I want to jump back to the QX55. We didn't talk much about Sorry. that. Do you remember the uh, FX, the Infinity FX? Mm-hmm. I had a lot of people that are huge fans of that vehicle. This is really a throwback to that. It has that sloped coupe line. I much prefer coupe-style SUVs than I do boxy SUVs. So when you talk about things like uh, the Mercedes-Benz E uh, um, E coupes, the E style, the GLEs, uh-huh. the, like the, the fifty-three. Well, the 53 is an AMG. Oh, sorry. So the, so the GLEs, the GLCs, the GLS. But when you have the coupe style, yeah. the back end is all sloped. Yeah, the coupe SUVs. I prefer those in the boxy SUVs. Huh. I like the coupe style SUVs. They're much better. Um, so I, I'm more in love with those coupe styles. Well, the QX55 is a coupe style SUV. Uh, it's it's new to their model lineup. Six between the QX50 and the QX60. I think it's going to be priced in the mid forty thousand dollar range, starting about forty five thousand dollars. Not bad Mm-mm. for for that. Uh, it's a very sexy, and I think it's sexy styling. The Japanese don't like us to call things sexy. I think it's sophisticated. Let's say Paris style sexy. Uh, it has uh, three trim levels: a luxe, an essential, and uh, a sensory. Uh, Sixteen uh, speakers, Bose system on the inside, and also a sliding second row for cargo and, of course, more legroom. I like the idea that you can push these buttons and the second row slides, you know, around um, or a lever, so you can adjust how much. You know, if you have a lot of cargo in the in the trunk, you can slide the second row forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, turbo, 260 horsepower, standard all-wheel drive. You don't get a ch- choice of turbo. You get all-wheel drive, which makes it a much better driving. If you live in Florida or California or Texas or Phoenix where the chance of snow is almost zero, an all-wheel drive vehicle will always drive better. You know, though, but they get huge rainstorms and huge storms that come in. Yeah, so- but it- to so be honest with you, you might, you might think that you'll be fine with a rear wheel or front wheel drive. Yes, rear wheel drives perform better. Front wheel drives get better gas mileage. But all you know, you think they perform better. But all wheel drive is actually a much more dynamic drive, yeah. especially where, around twisties. And then there are twenty inch wheels. Uh, but it, you'll have to wait until spring next year for it to arrive. You around, mean you'll have to wait a little longer too? Yes. Why would I be any different from the rest of the people? Because you always get the cool cars first. Uh, by a week or two. Yeah. I'm not that important. They're not shipping me these cars. Uh, did you just sit in a Sienna? <laughs> well, Sienna's on the market already. I know. Oh, Senna. Senna, sorry. Not a Sienna. Senna. Sienna's a McLaren. minivan. Oh, yes, I sat in a minivan versus a million dollar sports <laughs> car. That's very different. Very different, Jim. Yeah, very. Remind me not to let you order my new car. Oh, jeez. All right, still more to come. Our Auto Expert and OurAutoExpert.com. You're listening to Our Auto Expert. You can hear all past shows, see automotive videos, and read insider car stories about your next ride. Our Auto Expert is where 2 million Americans get their automotive news daily. You'll find it all at OurAutoExpert.com. Well, it was really fun to see the brand new TRX at uh, the uh, what would have been the LA Auto Show. We had it on TV all over the country in the last few days. I forgot how small I was until I had saw pictures of me on television uh, in front of that on WGN and all the TV stations. So um, it's so huge. You forget how big that truck is. Or maybe I'm so small. I don't know. But it does have clearance <laughs> lights across the hood on the air scoop and on the sides as well. Um, and standing next to it, I just realized how much I want it. But I'll tell you what also I love more than anything else in the world is seeing some of the old trucks from around the world. I mean, I'm not talking about, you know, 1970s, which a lot of us would consider old. I mean, that is 50 years ago, 1970. But some of the really old trucks from, you know, 70 I like years ago. the 50s ago. style. Yeah, 50s mm-hmm. or so. Um, they are not as, mu- not as much fun to drive as a new truck, which is much more comfortable. But they are <laughs> definitely beautiful to look at. I love to see some of the styling, especially when they have the round headlights and they have things, uh, things like those separate fenders. When the fenders and the grill weren't part of each other, mm-hmm. when they had the sort of se- separate fenders, they are so beautiful to look at. And I've often sat there, you know, going through 
the internet. I won't say Pinterest because that will make me sound a little weird, but it's <laughs> it's fun to sit there and go through and, and look at those. And oh. I was extremely excited to see when Ram had a throwback to some of the old trucks. So we've asked Mike Covell to come on to talk about uh, the, some of the throwbacks and the celebrations of old trucks that uh, they have had at Ram. He's the head of the Ram brand. So, Mike, welcome back to the show, by the way, and congratulations uh, on on this sort of throwback to history. This is celebrating, uh, 2021 is celebrating a Ram Power Wagon and the 775th Anniversary Edition. It's the first mass production 4x4 pickup truck and now celebrating 75 years. And when I see the picture, the image that you have of the 1946 Power Wagon next to the, 19, uh, to next to the 2021 Power Wagon, they are very different, but you've absolutely captured the essence of 1946 in the 2021, haven't you? Well, thanks for having me, and, and we really have. And, you know, you're absolutely right. It, 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 this is the granddaddy of all American 4x4 pickups, uh, the Ram Power Wagon. And it was, just like you said, Dick, it was the first truck to take off-road capability to the masses coming off its tour of duty back in World War II. And we can't think of a more fitting way to celebrate that milestone with uh, with the 75th anniversary power wagon. And we just built the first ones this week, so they'll be rolling into dealerships throughout the month of December. Uh, when I look at this, it's really hard to recreate a lot of the elements of these trucks. I mean, some of the elements are fairly easy. So the slats in the grill, I mean, you pretty much nailed that, but that wasn't too that wasn't too hard to overthink. I mean, you just had to recreate those. But the one hard thing to recreate was, of course, the round headlights. And the legal requirements for headlights back in 1946 were probably non-existent. But today, you're, you have a lot of legal requirements under the law, so you weren't able to really do what they did in 1946. But even looking at this vehicle, you've captured the essence of the round headlights. Yeah, we really have. And it's, it's, it's a modern interpretation of what we believe to be is a, uh, a, true, um, uh, a true attempt at paying homage uh, to what that's all about in, in, in a modern and sof- more sophisticated uh, package. And I'll tell you, that's on the exterior. When you climb into the cabin of the interior, what you're going to see on the 75th is an all-new interior uh, that we have that really pays um, uh, homage to the heritage color scheme. And in this case, we're referring to it as a mountain brown uh, interior, and it's just plush and beautiful and comfortable. And just so from the exterior as well as on the interior, I think it's a a total uh, package as it relates to paying uh, that heritage claim. Uh, You know, back in the day, back in 1946, I'm sure the truck was capable of helping out uh, people to sort of do not necessarily so much recreation, but work, uh, uh, hauling you know, groceries or hauling troops or those, those type of things, doing deliveries. Nowadays, the power wagon is much more of, of a pleasure tool. It's, it's the sort of things that you would take the family off-roading in or it's the sort of things that you would do things for recreation. Uh, is this built to have fun in the new power wagon? Oh, absolutely. And, and uh, this is, we offer so much class exclusive off road technology, everything from the electronic front and rear locking differential, the electronic disconnecting front sway bar. We talk about the 12,000 pound worn winch. Uh, this truck is the most capable off road truck in the market today, but also you bring in that level of refinement uh, that Ram is known for and that attention to detail on interior. So you have a no compromise solution. I think. This power wagon is, is a modern interpretation of, of, of that vehicle that can really work hard for you, and, uh, but as well be comfortable uh, for the family and uh, for, for on-road trips as well. You have a fact at Ram that I think doesn't get enough attention. That's over the last 30 years, Ram has the highest percentage of pickup, stops, pickup trucks uh, still on the road. And, and that, I think people always think that maybe it's the, the people that claim to be built tough that might have that reputation, but it's not. It's you. There are so many things. And, and you know, we, we, talk to, we talk to truck owners across this great country all the time. And I think... One thing that Ram does a really good job of is, is certainly listening to them and, and understanding what their needs and wants are, but maybe also being able to anticipate some things that they don't even know they need or want. Take, for example, the segment disru- disrupting 12-inch touchscreen, which started in yeah. the all-new Ram 1500. It's now migrated into the heavy-duty as well. 
So heavy duty, although it's still the most capable heavy duty truck out there, you now also have this level of refinement on the interior where we know our customers spend a great majority of their time as well. So uh, it's those little things. It's that attention to detail and it's anticipating what our customers want. I think that's made the Ram heavy duty uh, the success that it's been. Absolutely. Mike, in the last 30 seconds, tell us how much the uh, truck is and when it goes on sale. Yeah, the, the Ram Power Wagon 75th Anniversary Edition has an MSRP starting price of $65,250 before the sixteen ninety five destination, and it will be going on sale uh, late fourth quarter 2020. All right. I can't wait. It's an absolutely beautiful looking truck. Uh, big thumbs up from our end because I think you did such an amazing job. If you want to read more about this truck or any of the other uh, stuff that we review, uh, you can go to Our Auto Expert or uh, check out this show and previous episodes of the show. We've done some interviews with Mike Caval before. Thank you, Mike, for being on the show. Check out this new truck. It's absolutely stunning. You're listening to the Our Auto Expert podcast. This is our Auto Expert radio show. Our Auto Experts on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you can start a conversation with us, just direct messages. You can ask us anything. Our Auto Expert is where 2 million Americans get their automotive news daily. Well, we wanted to take a look at some EVs. There's lots of brand new EVs on the market and coming out, but I'll tell you right now. It not is it's not always the best deal and some of those EVs can be highly expensive. So we asked Thomas Micah from the Fast Lane to join us on the phone to talk about some EVs and not necessarily e- new EVs, but some EVs that are let's say gently used uh, <laughs> EVs. So Thomas, you are or Tommy because he's my friend, Tommy. Uh, those EVs, uh, g- gently used EVs, you can actually get some pretty rocking deals on them now, can't you? If you have over to the internet yeah that's right nick thank you for having me on today so what i'm talking about are evs that are just a couple years old a lot of which had brand new prices of over thirty thousand dollars and if you wait a year or two um see them with 15 20 000 miles on them it's not uncommon to see them for seven or eight thousand dollars in the used market why do they drop so much because i mean that seems like a ridiculous amount of money dropping in such a short time You know, Nick, that's a great question, and it's kind of like buying a previous generation iPhone. So if we look at the electric car industry, it's just evolving so fast. There are so many improvements that are coming out every single year that an EV that's three or four years old may seem relatively, you know, simplistic next to a modern EV. But that isn't to say they are bad cars because some of these cars are incredible fun. Some of them are really reliable and a lot of them are totally fun to drive so one of the things that uh, sort of puts me off about buying an ev is i think it's like an iphone when you use it Uh, after a while it doesn't charge quite as well after a while it sort of seems to sort of slow the the, the technology seems to slow down and you can't really get the warranty um, on the used vehicle does the battery operate as well as it did when you first buy it or do do the batteries wear out do you have to replace them what's the deal there so the mainstream electric car has been on the market for about 10 years now, and that is a, a very you know relevant question because even though you can buy a new EV or buy one of these used EVs for six or seven thousand dollars, the batteries can easily be more expensive than the cost of or the value of the car. Um, but what we're finding is the batteries are holding up extremely well with one or two exceptions. So when we think of affordable EVs, the first car that comes to mind is the Nissan Leaf that debuted uh, in about 2011 is when it hit the market. Now, the first-generation Nissan Leaf used air-cooled batteries, and they are the ones that see the biggest range degradation is what we call it. Basically, the battery doesn't fill up as far as it would when it was brand new. But the Leaf is the exception rather than the rule. So if we look at cars like the Fiat 500e, the Smart e, the uh, Chevrolet Spark EV, these are all vehicles that are in that same price point, about $6,000. And even after tens of thousands of miles, owners are finding that the batteries are holding their capacity just like they were when they were brand new, you know, five or six years ago and cost upwards of 35 grand. 
Now, tell me, tell me this: Is there something you can do as a car owner to make your vehicle actually last a longer time? Uh, you know, maybe not run it down to zero or not charge it up all the way. I mean, there's all these theories about what makes a cell phone last more. Yeah, you know, that's a great question. So typically what the manufacturers do is they have that in mind when they're engineering the vehicle. So we rate battery capacity in kilowatt hours. So if a car has, just to keep it simple, a 10 kilowatt hour battery, the manufacturer will only allow you to access maybe eight or nine of those kilowatt hours. It leaves a little bit of buffer for the bottom and the top of the battery so you don't really risk major um, bad damage to the battery by either draining it empty or filling it up full. That's not to say you can't. And if you do have a vehicle that has something called DC fast charging or fast charging capability, doing that frequently and especially in hot days can have a detrimental effect to the battery. But I'll give you an example, Nick. We bought a smart electric drive, which is this little bright yellow car. It only had a range of about 68 miles brand new. We bought it for $6,000, drove it for several months, put a few thousand more miles on it, and not once did I run it out of battery on my daily commute. Not once did I ever feel like it would leave me stranded. And the range is actually better than the manufacturer quoted. Oh, that's not bad. I know with some of these new vehicles or some of these electric vehicles that you can, uh, for instance, in the early insights, you can actually go in there and change certain cells in the battery if the cells are bad. But you can't always do that with every vehicle. Is there some vehicles that are better than others to buy as used? Yeah, so when I'm looking at the used EVs, my favorites are the Fiat 500e, so the electric Fiat. Um, I really like used BMW i3s, brand new. They were over $50,000 in some cases. You can now buy 2014 for about ten to $12,000. They are really good. The uh, 2014 and on uh, Chevrolet Spark EVs are really good. And, and the thing is, is you, you hear us talking about them, you're really just going to go out and have to drive them because the way they drive – is spectacular. They're so much more fun than their gasoline counterparts. Typically, they will beat anyone off the line at a stoplight because of the instant torque. And if you're looking for a second or a third car or maybe a car for a teenager, you can't get any better than these because super cheap to run, almost nothing to break, very few moving parts. Um, filling them up with electricity is pennies on the dollar compared to gasoline. And benefit of having a teenager they don't go typically more than 100 miles on a charge so you know they're gonna have to come back home at night oh pow <laughs> pow there you go kids take that <laughs> watch you not come back home at night you know they can go to charging station right tommy yeah well <laughs> depending on the car they might be there for a couple of hours so. yeah. and depending uh, on the kid they, uh, too a damper in their party. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right so is there some red flags vehicles that they they sh- you know you maybe should steer clear of Yeah, you know, the one that comes up frequently is the Nissan Leaf. And like I said, it all comes down to the air cooling technology on the batteries. So batteries are a lot like humans. They like to be between about 68 and 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And pretty much every EV has a liquid cooling system, just like you would find in a gasoline car, that makes sure they are at the optimal temperature for battery longevity. Well, the Leaf, both the old ones and the new ones, believe it or not, still use air cooling. And that is a problem because batteries, when they get hot, that's when you start to see battery failures. That's when you start to see potential for loss of range. So the Leafs are ones I would stick away from. Uh, The good news with the Leafs, and it depends on what year you get, but they have a long warranty. And check with your local dealer, check with the manufacturer, but typically the batteries are warranty for eight to 10 years on a lot of these EVs. So if you drop below a certain percentage on a lot of leaks, as long as you're within that battery warranty, and it could still be a 2015 or 2016, uh, you might be able to get that battery replaced at no cost to you because the manufacturers want to ensure that the batteries last. So that is an option for uh, leaf owners. But apart from that, Nick, I mean, you see these cars, they typically have no miles on them because people bought them as little commuters or little runabouts. Um Compared to a gasoline vehicle, which has hundreds, if not thousands, of moving parts within its engine, an electric car may have six or seven moving parts. You just plug it into the wall at home. Uh, you wake up in the morning. You've got a full charge. It's kind of like the way I look at it with these short-range EVs. It's like waking up in the morning with a quarter tank or a half tank on your gasoline car. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but typically I challenge you to, to keep a little book in your car and see how many miles you actually drive every day. And if it's under 50 or 60 miles, these cars will save you so much money. 
I promise to put a smile on your face. For example, the Spark has more torque than a Camaro SS. Wow. Um, and it looks like a, a, a little economy car. So you can just blow people away, and they'll be left in the dust uh, eating your electrons. Including the cops. Uh, the other question for you, what's, <laughs> what's the average, what's the average uh, warranty on these vehicles? Uh, you know, and, and if you buy a, a gently used one, it, does that warranty transfer from owner to owner? Yeah, it should transfer. And the warranty, there's typically two different warranties. So the vehicle warranty for the electronics and the motors, they may be three or four years, somewhere around 36,000 miles. But when it comes to the battery warranty, which is the most expensive component of the electric car, those are typically eight or 10 years. Um, and the mileage limits kind of vary. Uh, of course, if you buy a vehicle like the, the smart car, the little smart electric drive, uh, smart doesn't exist selling cars in the U.S. anymore. And I'm not sure how the warranty would, would work on that vehicle. But, Nick, the mileage is typically so low on these that, that the batteries are, are practically new in the vast majority of these cars. So we've owned a bunch of them now. Not a single one have we seen any range degradation from when it was new. Even driving them in the cold, where they typically – it's worth noting in the cold you do lose some of that quoted range because batteries are less efficient. But we drive them through all sorts of climate, and we haven't seen any failures. So it's uh, – it's a really exciting industry, and these cars are overlooked because, you know, they typically go 80 or 90 miles on a full charge, but for most people, that's all you need. I know you guys at uh, TFL bought a Tesla, and it was interesting news this week that uh, Consumer Reports took them off their their list of recommended buys. Uh, any thoughts on that? Yes. Um, Tesla is an interesting company, and Tesla fans will stand by them you know, to the end of time. But yeah, I do find that the, the Tesla products are typically, from our experience, less, less, they're not put together as well as um, a more traditional. You can um, bash industry. Tesla if you want. We're not going to, I feel like you're holding <laughs> back, Tommy. Let it go. Well, I mean, Nick, I'll put it this way. We had our door fail on our Model Y two or three times now. And that's a, that's a pretty big thing not to work, as in we couldn't open the door because the door handle broke. So, um, t- yeah, I think Tesla's very good at their software. They're very good at their battery technology. But when it comes to attaching panels to other panels, they're not quite as strong as someone like Volkswagen or Ford. Yeah, well, if you don't believe in panels attaching to paddles, then maybe you're okay with Tesla. Tommy, where can we find out, <laughs> where can we find out more? Yeah, we are on YouTube, TFL Car, TFL Truck. And uh, check out our website, TFL Car and TFL Truck.com. Excellent. Tommy Micah is from the Fast Lane. Uh, great site. The number one truck website uh, or on YouTube. They're absolutely brilliant. Check them out for more. This is our auto expert. I'm Nick Miles. Stand by. More to come from Rolls Royce. You're listening to our auto expert. Your smart speaker can be your radio. Just say, hey, Google, hey, Alexa, or hey, Siri. Play our auto expert radio show. The previous episodes of the podcast are available. Hours of endless fun await you. I'm Nick Miles, and this is our auto expert radio show, where two million Americans get their automotive news daily. I uh, saw a really uh, interesting headline this week, which was, I think, probably one of the best headlines out there for... uh, the Italians, anyway, we all know the Italian police use um, Lamborghinis as cars to get around. Have you seen this? Did you see this story? I did. Yeah, so this they is use, exciting. They use Lamborghinis as police cars. That's not news. That's not the news. No, so they no, often no. use Lamborghinis as, uh, as police cars to get around. But the funny thing is, so they were asked to take a kidney from one hospital to another hospital. So they said, yeah, we'll do it. I'm not sure why they didn't fly. They used, uh, they used the car to drive it from one hospital to the other. It's probably the, faster to get the, the car. Well, no, it couldn't. It's impossible. 300 miles they had to drive. So 300 miles from one hospital to another. So they, they sent this Lamborghini police car to take the kidney to do this transport from one hospital to another. So the, the police car shows up. It collects the kidney. And then it uses its lights and sirens to get on the road and take the kidney where they were waiting for it at the second hospital to do the transplant. That is a pretty routine thing that goes on, right? You're doing a kidney uh, transplant. You're, you need it as soon as possible. It took them two hours to go 300 miles in a Lamborghini police car. 
which amongst, you know, in itself is an absolutely unbelievable achievement. But to think the average speed, the average speed is 150 miles an hour. That doesn't include the getting onto the freeway and getting off of the freeway, which means, which is usually maybe fast would be 40, 50 miles an hour, which tells me that at some point they must have been doing close to 200 miles an hour. Well, if, to put it in perspective, Seattle to Vancouver is what, three hours? And that's about well, 150 miles. So, so miles. From, from Portland, Oregon to Vancouver is, is 197. No, Seattle from so so from Portland to Seattle, Seattle is 197. Right. Exactly. So it's been 200 miles, three hours. I was talking about from Vancouver, Washington yeah. to Seattle. Yeah. You roughly three hours. So right. And 150 ish miles. So if you think about going to Seattle and back. Right. Yeah, and three hours, six hours for a normal drive. Right. So be doing that in an hour each way. Right. Yeah. It's just insane. <laughs> Wait, I think it takes. The, the plane about that time, doesn't it? No. <laughs> about like, 30, 45 minutes. Well, it depends which airline you take. <laughs> yeah. It's about an hour if you take Delta. It's about uh, 30, 40 minutes, if, 45 minutes if you For take Alaska. Alaska. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that also depends on the route that they take. True. I just thought that was pretty staggering. It was fascinating. Pretty, pretty staggering. Mm -hmm. uh, pretty unbelievable, too. Uh, but there's, there's, there's a lot of very interesting news there. It was also interesting news to read this week that they had taken off... Um, Tesla, had, uh, Consumer Reports had taken Tesla, the Model Y, I think it was, no, the, the, I can't remember which model it was. They'd taken them off their recommended buy list, which was interesting. It was just very interesting. I didn't expect that to happen. So that was a very interesting uh, piece of news as well uh, to do that. I think also uh, the fact is all these new vehicles coming out now, there is uh, car companies are saying, everyone's saying, why are you doing all these big release parties and these, uh, big, well, they've held up for so long. For nine months, everything has been delayed. Mm -hmm. You know, they've d delayed the release of vehicles and they just can't delay any longer. I mean, Subaru right. couldn't delay the release of the BRZ. They had to do that this week. Uh, Lincoln could no longer delay the Nautilus release. They had to do it this week. Uh, these people are, can't delay the release of the new, I mean, the QX55. I saw that vehicle at the end of last year. And they, you know, under embargo, but please don't right. mention it. Please don't say that you couldn't, um, you know, please don't say that you, right. you've seen it. Yeah. And I've been hanging on to that information for almost a year. <laughs> I couldn't say anything, but they, they had to delay. They had to delay. They had to delay. Also, some very sad information that the Mazda Speed 3 will no, the, the Mazda have said they will no longer return it. It's absolutely done. There will be no, there's just no market for it. So, which is... Very sad as well. Uh, we are expecting some new vehicles to come along very soon. We've seen some undercover uh, new model vehicles. Uh, Ford is expecting to make some brand new announcements for 2021. Uh, they, there's some of these camouflage vehicles have been seen. I, I actually met with one of the guys at Ford, which does the camo on some of the vehicles. And there's a couple of very interesting things that they told us. First of all, if you can recognize a vehicle under camo, they want you to recognize it. Right. They say that if it's out on the street, it's it's there to be recognized and for you to tease. Because if they don't want you to know what it is, they often put a fake body on it. Yeah. So you I think it's something else. Padding. But then also they change the lines on it. So when they put the padding cam, they have two kinds of camo. They have camo paint. So you, you can't really get a good idea, but you get a suspiciously good idea of what it is in general yeah. and then then and then they have the camo the cover of the camo where it sort of is cloth that lies over the car and that's to just then then they have padding under it where so they don't changes. use like a wrap so they do two different kinds the, the wrap or the paint oh, oh and then, gotcha and then, okay and then they have a cloth that goes over there, and the cloth is completely there to distort how you feel how what you see how you feel <laughs> yeah i mean it's just, it would be just, weird just just, just uh, Oh, Harvey, we got Harvey on the line, have we? Oh. Let's do that quickly. Sweet. Um, 
uh, we were actually expecting to have Harvey Briggs on the line, and Harvey's joining us to talk about his new book. We'll 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 have you on for uh, for the two minutes we have left, Harvey, and then we'll rebook you. Uh, uh, <laughs> Thank you, Nick. I'm so sorry. That's all right. So you have a new book out. It's about Rolls Royce. First of all, totally jealous that you got to spend a whole bunch of time at Rolls Royce, uh, the the home yeah. of Rolls Royce in Goodwood, England. But you uh, basically follow. Tell us what the book's about in a sort of in an elevator pitch. Elevator pitch is this is a book about the extraordinary people, these individuals who um, make the world's most extraordinary motor cars. You know, the, the, it, we really got a great chance to meet the men and women, the craftspeople, the engineers, the designers, and and see how they do their job. And we really try to tell that story, not just of what they do, but who they are. And so that was really fascinating for us. When you say who they are, is it Bob and Sharon live in a small house, uh, you know, on the edge of Goodwood? Or is it sort of their, how they got to the positions they are and their backgrounds and that sort of thing? Yeah, their backgrounds, how they got to the positions they are, the types of training they went through, even um, as a kid, what inspired them to uh, get into this field. So it was really fascinating. The the PDF I've got, I haven't actually got the physical book yet. I've got the PDF. What were the most mm -hmm. surprising things that you learned? Well, really, the, one of the most surprising things to me was the number of young people that are working there. I'm talking about men and women in their 20s and early 30s who are masters of these crafts. You have in your head a little bit of, you know, these. Um, British, you know, gentlemen who spend decades learning their craft, but they have such a strong apprenticeship program and they're bringing so many new people in that it's a, it's a really diverse workforce. Harvey, we're going to rebook you. We're going to talk about this book. It sounds absolutely incredible. Harvey's written this great book about Rolls Royce. We'll have him back on. Meantime, go to OurAutoExpert.com for this show and much more. You've been listening to Our Auto Expert with Nick Mile. Find all the show episodes at ourautoexpert.com. Please follow us on all social media, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Our Auto Expert. And message us for a quick and witty response.